Hey folks, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the mass transport limiting current in your rotating disc electrode data. Now you might be asking, what is the mass transport limiting current? Well, for a rotating disc, I need to break this down into a few sections. First, you need to understand the electrochemical system, which consists of an electrolyte, the analyte, which is the redox active molecule we're studying, and the rotating disc electrode. So if you're familiar with electrochemical techniques like cyclic voltammetry, you'll know that as we sweep the potential linearly with time, we'll observe this duck-shaped cyclic voltammogram. Now, the current response in cyclic voltammetry is a function of a variety of different things. Uh, you have heterogeneous and homogeneous kinetics, you have double layer capacitance, you have Faradaic and non-Faradaic processes. But for the sake of this video, I want to focus on two factors that go into the current response in cyclic voltammetry. The first is the standard redox potential, where the current is determined by the electrode potential relative to the standard redox potential. Second is the nature of mass transport, and for cyclic voltammetry, mass transport is limited by the diffusion of the molecule towards the electrode surface. However, if we rotate the electrode in a highly controlled fashion, the precision rotation generates laminar flow towards the electrode surface. Under these conditions, the current response is no longer diffusion limited, but is now convection limited. And we no longer see the duck-shaped voltammogram, but rather we get this S-shaped or sigmoidal shaped curve where the mass transport limiting current is the distance from the baseline, where we have zero current, to the plateau current where the redox reaction is taking place and the current response is no longer changing. The standard redox potential of the molecule is the midpoint of this transition. In techniques like cyclic voltammetry, your current response is actually very transient and very dynamic. But with a rotating disc, we say that the current response is steady state. It's a calm, peaceful, steady state. Hear the peaceful rotation of your rotator. Watch your potentiostat generate a smooth, perfect sigmoid. But it ain't a perfect sigmoid now, is it? We don't live in this perfect world. We got real data. We got strange baselines. We got non-zero starting positions. What gives? But that's what this video is about. In this video, we're gonna take some real data and we're gonna use some tools in Aftermath in order to extrapolate the mass transport limiting current. So let's take a look at Aftermath. Okay, so we have Aftermath opened up and I have a real rotating disc uh, electrode experiment. This is complements of the Dempsey lab at UNC Chapel Hill. It, within our electrochemical system, the analyte is cobaloxime. It's an electrocatalyst for hydrogen evolution. The electrolyte solution is acetyl nitrile with tetrabutyl ammonium hexafluorophosphate. And the electrode is a glassy carbon electrode. We swept the potential from minus one volt to about minus 1.7 volts. This is a reduction of the cobaloxime. We did this at a scan rate of 25 millivolts per second and uh, 1600 RPM. To determine the mass transport limiting current, I'm going to extrapolate the baseline and the plateau current, and then determine what the, the distance is between those two at the midpoint of the voltammogram. So to do this, I'm going to use the peak height tool in Aftermath. So I'm gonna left click on the voltammogram, right click, add tool, peak height, box car average size is zero, that's okay. And then I have these two pink dots that are going to define the baseline. And I'm going to move this green dot to the center of the voltammogram. I have a peak height here. Now I'm going to use the peak height tool a second time. I'm going to left click, uh, then right click, then go to add tool. And I'm going to peak height. Again, boxcar size is zero. Now I have a second set of pink dots here. And the pink dots that are linked to each other are highlighted. So we have, we'll take this one, we'll move it down here. And we'll take this second one and move it down over here. I will now 
move this green dot to the center. They should be around the same location at the midpoint. And now I have these two peak heights. And if I take the absolute value of both peak heights and add them together, I should get the mass transport limiting current. All right, folks, that is how you calculate the mass transport limiting current from your RDE data. I hope you thought that this video was helpful. Give it a thumbs up, a like, leave us a comment. If you have any questions, share it with any uh, friends, colleagues who you think this video would help out. All right, I'll see you soon.